Because we picked up one other theme at the beginning of this season of the church here called End Times, this is our last Sunday and we're ending with Saints Triumphant instead of what usually ends this season called Christ the King. Um, both talk about Christ's victory for us and what we have to look forward to. Um, Saints Triumphant. Um, keep in mind, when you hear the, the name Saints, what are we talking about? The New Testament over and over again refers to all believers as saints. Some people, I think, in our culture have the mistaken impression that saints are those only, only those few really holy, holy people that, that live the, the life that's above, you know, everyone else. Um, that's not the point, because none of us live a holy life. The Bible's message is saints are those who are washed clean through faith in Jesus. You are saints. Saints triumphant. So, party now, you are holy. Um, when we talk about saints triumphant, we're talking about the ones that have left life here where we're still attacked and enjoy eternal life with God. So there are the saints who have departed this life, believers that have left here, are now with God. We all look forward to joining that group one day, whether it's at the day of our death or if we're still here, the day Christ returns. Let's celebrate this theme this morning. We're going to begin in our service folder. We'll do the responsive words. And then we'll go right into our opening song. Please then join in that entire song as, as printed there. Uh, join in the entire thing along with me. I invite you to stand at this time. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you. Amen. O oh Lord, open my lips. Hasten to save me, O God. O Lord, come quickly to help me. Praise be to the God, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Come, O come, let us worship. shall be as white as snow. Though they be red like crimson, they shall be as wool, for I will forgive your sins and remember your wickedness no more. According to the Lord's command, I forgive you all your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. 
Thanks be to God. Amen. Please have a seat. Let us lift our voices in praise to Jesus for the victory he has won for us. strength and my song. 
He has become my salvation. The Lord's right hand is lifted high. The Lord's right hand has done mighty things. I will not die, but live. And I will proclaim what the Lord has done. I will give you thanks, for you answered me. You have become my salvation. The stone the builders rejected has become the capstone. The Lord has done this, and is marvelous in our eyes. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. You don't know what the reference there to the, the capstone is a reference to, to Jesus. The New Testament makes that clear. He was rejected, but through his rejection, he suffered and died to take our sin. The first lesson, then, of, of those appointed for this Sunday besides the psalm, um, 1 Thessalonians 4, um, two things I want you to, to listen carefully for. Listen carefully, first of all, for um, the reason these words are given. There was a, a misunderstanding among the people there, um, evidently, that that some who died before Jesus' return would, would either not take part in the, in the resurrection on the last day, or there would be some, some distinction made and it wouldn't happen all at the same time. These words are written to assure believers, all believers will be together on the last day. All believers will be taken to be with the Lord at the day of Jesus' return. No one will be left behind or left out from among God's people. And then, listen carefully then for the, the timing. Um, some people take a reference in here and, and try to, to take it apart from the last day, as if there's going to be some believers taken away from this world, raptured away before the last day. Notice the timing in these verses. This is all reference to the last day at Jesus' return. The only time we're going to be taken from this sinful world away is on that last day. 1 Thessalonians chapter 4. Brothers, we do not want you to be ignorant about those who fall asleep or to grieve like the rest of men who have no hope. We believe that Jesus died and rose again, and so we believe that God will bring with Jesus those who have fallen asleep in him about believers. According to the Lord's own word, we tell you that we who are still alive, who are left till the coming of the Lord, will certainly not precede those who have fallen asleep. For the Lord himself will come down from heaven with a loud command, with the voice of the archangel and with the trumpet call of God, and the dead in Christ will rise first. After that, we who are still alive and are left will be caught up together with them in the clouds to meet the Lord in the air. And so, we will be with the Lord forever. Therefore, encourage each other with these words. This is the word of our God. We'll speak responsibly to the verse of the day, another New Testament section, Revelation chapter 7. They are before the throne of God and serve Him day and night in His temple, and He who sits on the throne will spread His tent over them. Never again will they hunger, never again will they thirst. The sun will not beat upon them, nor any scorching heat. For the Lamb at the center of the throne will be their shepherd. He will lead them to springs of living water. And God will wipe away every tear from their eyes. Hallelujah. Please rise for the reading of our gospel lesson. Mark records some of the, the events that are going to happen here in the world just before Jesus' return, or just at his return. The other thing you might keep in mind is the reference in Luke. When these things start to happen and they seem terrifying, they won't be terrifying to the believers. God says, at that time, if you're still here, lift up your head because your rescue has come. Mark chapter 13. But in those days following that distress, the sun will be darkened, and the moon will not give its light, the stars will fall from the sky, and the heavenly bodies will be shaken. At that time men will see the Son of Man coming in clouds with great power and glory. And he will send his angels and gather his elect from the four winds, 
from the ends of the earth to the ends of the heaven. This is the good news of our Lord. Please have a seat. Our next hymn is printed there. Note that you can sing along with it the entire way through. your people will arise. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations until then. But at that time, your people, everyone whose name is found written in the book, will be delivered. Multitudes who sleep in the dust of the earth will awake, some to everlasting life, others to shame and everlasting contempt. Those who are wise will shine like the brightness of the heavens, and those who lead many to righteousness like the stars forever and ever. This is the word of our God. Let's pray as we begin to consider these words. Lord God, sanctify us by your truth. 
Your word is truth. Amen. You've probably noticed, like I have in the news, terror attacks continue. As the, the list of nations that have been hit grows, and as the, the casualty toll mounts, as the dead are grieved, even sometimes before it was still well, uh, another uh, attack erupts, people sometimes wonder, you may wonder, will they hit here? Will they hit near us? Will we ever stomp this evil out? Who will win in this battle? By God's grace, His ultimate rescue for you is unfolding as the day approaches when Jesus returns and brings an end to all evil and takes all of his people to live with him forever. Can you hear the footsteps? Your smile and the smile on the face of, of all Christians should grow wider and wider with every closer approaching footfall. But there's someone else who also hears and notes the footsteps. He knows every day that passes, this present world with all of its chaos and evil is one step closer to its ultimate end when it's all done. In reply, he and those standing with him, they burn with incessant rage and frantic maneuvering. And though you can't see them, don't think for a second that they are not real. The battle lines are invisible to human eyes. God, however, has given us a glimpse into these things through his word. We are locked in a battle with the spiritual forces of evil. The conflict will continue until the day Jesus returns on the last day. As each present day passes into history, Jesus' return is one step closer. And we look forward to it. At that time, every believer in Jesus will, will arise, those who have died, and all of us will stand in victory with Jesus and, and be with him in joy forever. But the devil and his demons don't like the thought of that one bit. And so you can understand why this is true. As the end approaches, and their doom draws near, the devil and his demons, they, they stir up distress. And so the distress for God's people here on earth will get worse. Yeah, today's message is not things are getting better in our world. In fact things are going to get worse. The Lord revealed to Daniel to expect just this. There will be a time of distress such as has not happened from the beginning of nations <coughs> until then. Keep in mind the distress really happens on, on two levels. There's the physical side, but then there's also the, the spiritual. And keep in mind that the ultimate aim of the devil in stirring up distress is always to get at you and other believers spiritually. But here's why such distress need not panic you or terrorize you, dear child of God. You are dearly loved. 
and your God has put in place guards for your protection. And one day, God will rescue you from this world which is dying, and he will bring you home to himself. Take a closer look at God's care for you now. proof is here in the words that the Lord spoke to Daniel. He says, your people are protected through all this distress. I've got their back, God says. These are words spoken to you. You, alongside Daniel, are part of God's eternal family through faith in Jesus. The Lord will protect you through all the distress. Who is in your security detail? Look who the Lord holds before our eyes. He tells us about an unseen warrior and his army of guardians, who he deploys in service to us, his people. How much do you know about Michael? How much do you know or think about the angels, God's holy angels? The artists who have, have given us the, the cute depictions of, of gentle little beings strumming on harps are nowhere near God's description of his angels. We know the names of only two angels. Michael is one of them. The other one you might be familiar with, Gabriel, right? We're familiar at this time of the year with hearing about Gabriel coming and announcing to both Zechariah and to Mary God's messages in the months leading up to Jesus' birth. It's Michael, however, who is described as the great prince who protects God's people. That's in Daniel here. And he's also described in the book of Jude as, he's the only one described in, in the, the Bible as an archangel. Arch is a title which means lead or leadership. So he has a lead position among the angels. He is a general and guards God's army of angels. In Daniel chapter 10, a couple chapters earlier, he was told how he was deployed. He was deployed in Persia at Daniel's time in order to battle against Satan's agent who was trying to undo God's will there. And then God even foretells a few verses later how in the future, after Daniel's day, Michael would be deployed because Satan's agent would be attempting to undo God's plan for his people in Greece. You might remember how, how the Greek nation took center stage in, in the world's events in between the time of, of Daniel and the time of our Savior's coming. These activities of Michael give us insight to a truth of God. The Lord has his holy angels sent in protection of his people until he calls us home to himself in heaven. There's another time that Michael is mentioned in the Bible. You see a reference here in Revelation 12, but before I get to the rest of the reference, I want you to give, I want you to give the backstory so you, you get where this comes in at. Shortly after creation, Satan tried his best to unseat God from his throne. He failed. Satan turned his attention to attack humanity, Adam and Eve. And he led them to fall. But then God made his promise to send the Savior for our human race. And ever after that point, Satan was attempting to thwart and derail God's plan to save. But God the Son came just as planned at just 
the time planned. So the devil attacked, seeing his opportunity, the devil attacked at the very heart of God's promise. He attacked our Savior himself. And for a while, it looked as if he had won. When Jesus was nailed to the cross, but Satan didn't grasp that God loved us so much that he, the Son, came for this very purpose. To suffer the punishment and curse of sin on the cross in our place. Jesus hung there not because the devil had won a victory, but rather in order to win the victory God had always planned. And to deliver the crushing blow to Satan there. With that backdrop in view, with that as the, the background in Revelation chapter 12, then we are told this. Michael and his angels fought against the dragon and his angels, a reference to Satan and the fallen angels, and Satan and his angels lost and were hurled down, down to the earth. <coughs> A defeated and raging Satan then went after the Christian church, attempting to destroy it. Satan tried to keep God's victory of Jesus from getting out to human ears and to human hearts. But again, he failed. God strengthens his people even in the midst of the severe persecution that the devil enacted and stirred up. And in their distress, they remained holding on to God and to Jesus and to his truth. For they knew their real home was in heaven. Do you, do you get what they understood? God's fight against Satan and against sin and against death has already been won. And Satan knows all of those truths. There is no war between you and God. Through faith in Jesus, through trust in what he has done for you, you are completely at peace with God. So foiled in his effort to destroy the Christian church, Satan still didn't give up, and enraged, he turned his attention at individuals, trying to pick us off one by one. Why us? Satan already holds under his sway all those who don't believe in Jesus. They remain wrapped in their sin, sadly. So Satan targets us. He sets his targets on you and me. He knows that through faith in Jesus, our sin is washed away. Time and again, the New Testament tells us through faith in Jesus, we are saints. We are holy. Remember, you are baptized. God has washed you clean through water and through the Word. As long as we remain in Jesus, in faith, we are safe. So, Satan attempts to lure us away from our faith in Jesus. He entices us by portraying the sins of the world as the good life. As if we, if we follow our sinful desires, then life will just be perfectly happy for us. He wants us to ignore the truth of, of the part that our sins play in making this world so miserable like it is. How many ways have we... We, we got in God's will all mixed up and turned around in, in our attitudes and our actions, and the result has been just pain for, for us and for others around us. Satan entices us to complain when life isn't living up to the, the way we, we dreamed it would be. Perfect like we desire. As if God ever promised us such a life here in this sinful world. 
just the opposite. Satan distracts us from the truth of God's word that tells us life here is the worst it will ever get for us as believers in Jesus. <coughs> Satan wants to keep us from seeing that, that we have a home with our God, our true home, where we will get to live in perfect joy forever with him, free from pain, free from sadness. Do not imagine that the attacks that Satan orchestrates are some small, easily abated snips at the heels of your soul. He schemes, and he prowls, and he seeks to devour you. He goes for the jugular of our souls. Here's how Ephesians 6 describes the, the battle. Our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. We're told that Satan knows his time is short. So be prepared. Expect him to rage. To be frantic in his attacks. <coughs> stirring up distress. Striking fear might be one of his tactics in order to, in order to confuse us. In order to, to stir up doubt in us. Look at, look at all the violence in our world. Look at how much of that violence is actually directed against Christians. God's people in the world. But such distress need not panic you or terrorize you. Why? We are never promised by God a life without hurt or pain or persecution or even death. In fact, we're told just the opposite, that God's people should expect such things from this sin-filled world. What we are promised in the midst of it is Nothing can separate us from our Lord's love. He will remain with us through everything that we face. And we are given the assurance that everything that He allows, He will work it ultimately for our eternal good, the good of His people. And along with that, we are also assured we have his holy angels given in protection of us. Psalm 91 tells us, He will command his angels concerning you to guard you in all your ways. Now, go from that back to Daniel. I'll take a little more literal translation. It's not very different from what you have in your bulletin, but a little more literal translation of the first verse. At that time, Michael... The great prince who stands guard over your people will stand guard. And if you see the slight change, it, it's intended to bring out the fact that... Do you, do you see what changes in, in God's use of angels through the years? Absolutely nothing. Michael, who stands guard for your people, Daniel, at your time, will continue to stand guard for God's people until... The very last time. Remember, God's holy angels are with you. Remember, the Lord himself remains with you. And he has outfitted you with his armor. Through faith in Jesus, devil's accusations cannot stick to you, dear child of God. Use the shield of faith to extinguish the flaming attacks of the devil that would, would try to, to rip away God's truth that you know. Use the weapon which God has placed into your hand to, to counter the devil's attacks. The sword God gives us is his word. Make the connection of just how important God's word is. Here in Daniel chapter 12, we believers are described as those who are wise. Well, how do we get this wisdom? And, and what is this wisdom all about that's being spoken of here? 
We're told over in 2 Timothy. Paul says to Timothy, Now from infancy you've known the Holy Scriptures. You've known the Scriptures which are able to make you wise. Wise for salvation. Through faith in Christ Jesus. All Scripture is God-breathed and is useful for teaching, rebuking and correcting, and training in righteousness. The wisdom you have comes only from God's Word. It's the wisdom that leads you to confess, I am a, a sinner. I was a sinner from birth. I still sin in so many ways daily. It's the, the wisdom of God that leads you to, to trust Jesus, you, your righteousness, your perfect life, your innocent suffering and death to remove my sin and its curse. That is the only thing that washes me clean and, and makes me whole. My name is written in your book of life, O oh Lord, because of all that you have done for me. Your smile, and the smile of all Christians, should grow wider and wider with every closer approaching footfall of Jesus' return. If you die before his return, be assured, your body will rest in the grave. Your soul will immediately return to God and be with him until the last day. And on the last day, you will rise. And together with all God's people, we will enjoy eternal life. This is our comfort. Amen. And the peace of God which surpasses all understanding. Guard your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. If you would turn with me, the instructions are a page before, but we're going to sing the song on page pages 8 and 9. If you've sung it before, you notice that we go back and forth between congregation and pastor. Please join in all the blood portions, and I invite you to stand.
Please have a seat. Take just a moment and then we'll, we'll gather our offering as we continue our worship. Um, please take a moment to also send, sign the friendship register. We'd love to have a record of everyone's visit with us today. It should be hopefully under each eye. section, lift up our request to our God knowing He hears us. Um, I'm going to say on, on our behalf, it's usually phrased in the first person, I thank you God, and I'll say on our behalf a prayer called Luther's Morning Prayer. Um, if you're familiar with this, you have a, a morning and an evening prayer that's become commonly used in our midst at different times. Um, and in the midst of it, you're going to hear a reference to God's holy angel. I wonder, I wonder if as Martin Luther wrote that prayer and began to say it, if he was thinking of of this reference to Daniel and Michael's um, position, God's holy angel to protect us. Then after that, we'll speak responsibly to the prayer that's printed for us there, and then also the Lord's prayer. Please stand at this time. I thank you, my heavenly Father, through Jesus Christ, your dear Son, that you have kept us this night from all harm and danger. Keep us this day also from sin and every evil, that all our doings and life may please you. Into your hands we command our bodies and souls and all things. Let your holy angel be with us, that the wicked foe may have no power over us. Amen. In the morning, O Lord, I call to you, be merciful to me, and hear my prayer. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Christ, Christ have, have mercy. mercy. Lord, Lord have, have mercy. mercy. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and forever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine on you and be gracious to you. The Lord look on you with his favor and give you peace. Amen. Please have a seat. Final song of praise for our worship is printed there. I believe it's on the next page.
Good morning again. Good morning. Welcome to everybody. Um, there's quite a few announcements just to highlight for you with the, all the, the special things coming up. First of all, this week is a little different schedule. There's no Bible information class on Wednesday afternoon, but instead um, we have a, a Thanksgiving Eve worship gathering. It'll be a, a devotional service, so it'll be a little shorter. Um, you'll be out of here by, for sure by 7.45 if you're able to make it. So, um, 7 o'clock, Wednesday evening. In fact, after church, if someone wants to help out, um, we could put that on our sign-out front. I could, I could use some hands to help out. Um, get that up there. Otherwise, I'll get it out there tomorrow. All right. Um, other things coming up on your bulletin on page 11. I've got a list of, of things there underneath Thanksgiving Eve worship. Um, we've got some special worship services coming up. You'll see one listed there, My Son, My Savior. Um, I'm going to shorten down our, our usual liturgy portion. And then after that, for our worship, we'll, we'll watch the, the new video in the series done by our, our church body. We've done this with Road to Emmaus, and, and um, what's the next one? Come follow me. Good. And now this is the one that came out this year leading up to Christmas. It's, it's looking at things from Mary's perspective. So um, we're going to use that. We'll also use it in the Bible study those three Sundays in December. We have DVDs that after we watch it, you'll be able to take it home with you to either watch again with a family or someone else in your family or to hand to a neighbor and, and invite also for all the Christmas stuff coming up. A couple other things happening, um, some different events for different groups. Women's tea gathering, women's gathering. Uh, it's been decided we'll do that on Sunday, December 6th. So there's that sign-up sheet that was out last week. Now it just notes the 6th on there. I don't know if I put December, but that's what it is. Um, so it'll be after the church time, um, after the, the Sunday morning with Bible study, and then the women will stay around. Um, so if you're able to come for that, great. If you're able to, uh, to bring some food for that, you can sign up in, in there as, as well. Uh, there is a kids Christmas event that we hold annually. That'll be December 12th, a Saturday. And again, there's a sign-up sheet there. If you can bring stuff in for that or help with that, that's in the, in the area by the, the refreshments and snacks. Um, and then look forward to uh, inviting people to that. The next two Sundays, we'll have invitations available. A lot of times, kids, um, it's a great event for you to come hear about the, the Christmas story, do some crafts, have some fun. Um, but it's also a great event to invite either neighbors, or friends or <coughs> classmates. So we've had a lot of other people attend to get to share the Christmas story with them. Um, there's a few other things about changes with the schedule with the upcoming holiday season, so take a look in your, your bulletin. Um, I highlighted one of the opportunities to help out here by taking invitations. Um, we also like to take invitations in connection with the DVD I said, in connection with Christmas for Kids. We'll also print up invitations for our two Christmas services, Christmas Eve and Christmas Day. So. If you can take those as that, that time approaches, if you can take those around our neighborhood here, let me know. We've gone out in groups before. If you would prefer to take them to a street or two near you or more, then um, take a bunch of them and plan to go around your neighborhood and invite others to come and hear the good news. There's other things that are listed there as opportunities. I don't know if I got a bunch in the bulletin, but um, there is a, as you turn to the next page, there's a cleaning spot for next weekend. If you're able to come and clean the church leading up to uh, our services next weekend, you can sign up there. Um, there's opportunities in the weeks ahead, too, if you'd like to sign up for something like that. Um, there's other things around here, too. I'll, I'll try to, to get a list out to you by email of other things you can help with if you'd like to. Um, let's see. And then the only other thing I wanted to highlight, anybody else have other announcements to make? i got a couple birthdays to, to note today. Good? Okay. So... I have to apologize, I misspelled the name Lindsay. There should be a D in there, right? We talked about that, we got corrected. Um, but it's Lindsay's birthday tomorrow, and I guess it's also Emily's birthday tomorrow. So um, we've got snacks brought in by them, and we can please stay around and have some cake, have some cupcakes, um, have some refreshments. The Bible study hour then will be in about 15 minutes or so. Stay around for that as well. And um, before we do that, why don't we, before we go out, why don't we sing? So we got, we're going to do Emily, because she's older, for Emily and Lindsay, we're going to say, okay? <laughs> Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, dear Emily and Lindsay. Happy birthday to you. We're glad we could celebrate with you. God's blessings to you today. Okay, stay around if you're able.